The U.S. presidential election is the big inflection point of the fourth quarter. And looking at the world through a geopolitical lens, we tend to give less weight to human agency and more to the structural forces shaping state behavior. And while campaign rhetoric does not necessarily translate neatly into policy once in office, there is enough of a gap between the two candidates to where this election in particular is giving pause to U.S. allies and adversaries alike. We've been tracking throughout the year how Moscow has been leveraging the Syrian civil war and Ukrainian conflict to negotiate with the U.S., both by playing a spoiler on the battlefield and by playing the diplomat negotiating ceasefires. But with less than three months to go in the Obama presidency, we're not going to see any big bargains between Moscow and Washington, especially when the outside stakeholders are severely limited in controlling events on the ground. This means a return to the usual pressure tactics by Moscow, threats to withdraw nuclear cooperation, brazen flyovers, and so on. In Syria, the U.S. has lost patience with Russia's bargaining tactics and is focused instead this quarter on reinforcing military support for the rebels. Russia, in turn, will reinforce the loyalist siege on Aleppo with the intent of improving its negotiating position going into the next year. As that fighting intensifies, the U.S. will have to maintain a tactical dialogue with the Russians to mitigate the potential for clashes. But this is a crowded battlefield, especially with the Turks now in play and coming into closer contact with loyalist forces. Turkey will thus have to put extra effort into maintaining its own understanding with Russia while also dealing with rising backlash to its growing military footprint in northern Syria and Iraq. The Battle of Mosul will finally commence in Iraq, and all parties involved, from the Iranian-backed Shia militias, Turkish-backed Sunni militias, Erbil, and Baghdad will have extra incentive to play nice with the operation underway. But beneath the veneer of cooperation, all are positioning for the post-Mosul scramble, with Iran already working its own proxies to curb Turkish influence. In the Far East, meanwhile, South China Sea claimant states will be watching and waiting for clarity on the level of U.S. commitment they can expect from a new U.S. president, especially with the Trans-Pacific Partnership now paralyzed in Washington. This air of uncertainty will give China the opportunity to push its own regional trade agreements with its neighbors, and all parties will continue to leverage economic cooperation to manage their maritime frictions. China could step up activity in the East China Sea in response to Japan's growing involvement in the South China Sea, but North Korea's accelerated nuclear testing this quarter will be another driver for dialogue among China, Japan, and South Korea in spite of Beijing's threats. In Latin America, the Venezuelan regime will survive another quarter, forestalling a referendum recall and staving off default. Next door in Colombia, negotiations to try and salvage a peace deal with the FARC will resume, this time with the opposition. But hardened demands, a limited timeline, and growing stress between the FARC leadership and the group's foot soldiers does not bode well for the long-term viability of the peace deal at this point. In Europe, a referendum vote in Italy will heighten political uncertainty in Europe's third largest economy. But we think any resulting political crisis will be contained and early elections can be avoided. Nonetheless, political tremors in Italy will draw more scrutiny to Italy's troubled banks at a time when the banking sector across the developed world is under heavy strain from ultra-low interest rates, fresh scandals, and stagnant growth overall. Stressed monetary authorities in Japan and Europe will still be able to find relief in the oil markets, however. Saudi Arabia is likely to cut production to pre-summer surge levels and will use the opportunity to coordinate limits with other major producers. But a number of exceptions will be negotiated, and Libya, Iraq, Nigeria, and Kazakhstan all stand to bring additional barrels online in the near future, making it likely that any effort by Saudi to manage the downside of the market and shape the price of crude will have limited effect in the end. Frictions are evidently building in every corner of the world in the final months of this year, ensuring that whoever ends up in the White House will have a very full plate. To read more about what's on that plate, please check out the full fourth quarter forecast at stratfor.com.